Welcome in, everyone, to Lively Lewis Stories. That's right. We're back with even more awesome adventures with Levi and Ivy. Set your story time meter to fun and get ready to join the Lively Lewis crew. All you need is your imagination and... Off we go! I can't wait to see where our story takes us today. Have you ever wanted to get more Lively Lewis in your life? Well, we've got you covered. Grab an adult and zoom over to LivelyLewisShop.com. Or just click on the link in our show notes. Enough about that. Let's get to today's super Lively Lewis story. The story you're about to enjoy was inspired by Penelope. Thank you so much for your amazing idea. If it was my birthday, I'd wish that my birthday cake was as big as my house, said Levi. Just think of all that frosting. That does sound delicious, but if it was my birthday, I'd wish for magic powers, added Ivy, like flying or super strength. Those both would be really cool, said their friend Penelope as the three friends drew with sidewalk chalk in Penelope's driveway. But if it was my birthday, I'd wish to visit this place. Penelope then pointed to the drawing she had made on her driveway with bright, colorful chalk. It was a place unlike anything Levi and Ivy had ever seen before. However, Penelope had seen it often because it was an imaginary land she had created in her head called Penopolis. Wow, Penelope, that place is incredible. It's like everything is opposite, upside down and all turned around, said Levi. I'd love to visit there with you, said Ivy. Does it have a name? That's when Penelope explained to her friends all about Penopolis and the extraordinary land it was. You're right said Penelope. Everything in Panopolis is upside down, opposite, and all turned around. That's what makes it the best. It's nothing like anything you've ever seen before. A new adventure, creature, and place around every turn. After learning about this place, I may want to change my birthday wish, giggled Levi. And thankfully for you, if you really wanted to wish to go to Panopolis, you don't have to wait very long at all, added Ivy. Yeah, your birthday is right around the corner, and we can't wait for your party this weekend added Levi. I know, me too, said Penelope as she added more things to her chalk drawing. As they continued to play and draw, Penelope's mom walked out of the house and asked if Penelope could help her with something for her party. Penny, could you please help me find the birthday candles that you picked out to use at your party this weekend? Her mom asked as she waved hello to Levi and Ivy. I thought I put them in the kitchen drawer by the dishwasher, but now I can't find them. Do you think you and your friends could help solve the case of the missing candles? I think we could do that, answered Penelope, who was always up for a good mystery. So Levi, Ivy, and Penelope all dropped their chalk pieces and ran into the house. We'll find them in no time, Penelope's mom, said Levi with a big smile on his face. Yeah, we're happy to help, added Ivy. Also, I have a question, and it's not totally important, but when we find these special birthday candles, what kind of tasty, amazing birthday cake will they be going into this weekend? Asked Levi with a grin. A chocolate cake with pink strawberry frosting, smiled Penelope's mom. That sounds amazing, said Levi and Ivy together. And after getting that bit of info, Levi, Ivy, and Penelope set out to find the special birthday candles. They looked all over the kitchen, but Penelope's mom was right. They were not there. Then they decided to look in the food closet, the toy closet, and even Penelope's bedroom closet. But no candles. They sat in Penelope's living room trying to think of the next place to look when Ivy spotted a bag sticking out of the hallway closet by the front door. And she would recognize that colorful logo anywhere. The bag was from Benny's Bakery. Penelope, is there a chance that the candles could still be in the bag from Benny's Bakery? Asked Ivy. Not sure, but they could be, answered Penelope. However, I don't know where the bag would be. I do, said Ivy as she ran toward the closet and grabbed the bakery bag. That's right, said Penelope. My mom puts all our reusable bags in the closet by the front door so we can grab them when we go out to do our shopping. As Penelope was explaining this to Ivy and Levi, Ivy reached into the bag and a smile spread across her face. I found the candles, she exclaimed as she held up a package with seven pink glitter candles inside. Mom, we found the candles, called out Penelope. Thank you so much, Ivy. Ivy handed over the candles to Penelope's mom when she walked out from the kitchen. She thanked her daughter and her friends for finding the missing candles and told them they were all set to head back outside and keep playing. But before they set back outside, Ivy noticed that there was something else in the Benny's Bakery bag. 
It looks like we missed something, said Ivy as she reached into the bag and took out a gold coin. A gold coin? Asked Penelope, sounding very surprised. I don't remember getting this at the bakery. As Levi, Ivy, and Penelope studied the little coin, they saw something written on it. Here's a birthday coin for you. Flip it and your wish may come true. Just then, the coin began to glow. Then as all three friends looked on, the glow got brighter and brighter. Levi, Ivy, and Penelope were mesmerized. Are you seeing this? Asked Penelope. I'm watching right along with you, answered Levi with wide eyes. That is some coin. I know, it has to be, added Ivy. Magic. Magic, the three friends all said at the same time. I wonder what would happen if I flipped the coin, asked Levi. He grabbed the coin from Ivy, who was still holding it, and did just that. The coin flipped over and over in the air and landed on the floor, but nothing happened. I wonder what would happen if I flipped the coin, asked Ivy. She picked the coin up off the floor and did just that. The coin flipped over and over in the air and landed on the floor, but once again, nothing happened. Levi and Ivy both looked at Penelope. Well, I guess I'm almost the birthday girl, so I wonder what would happen if I flipped the coin, asked Penelope. She then picked up the coin from the floor and did just that, but this time, instead of nothing happening, Levi, Ivy, and Penelope watched as the coin flipped over and over in the air and kept going. In fact, the coin flipped and flipped so many times, it created a breeze that swirled all around them. Not knowing what would happen next, Levi, Ivy, and Penelope closed their eyes, and when they finally opened them, they found themselves right in the middle of a magical land. They were in Pinopolis, and it was more amazing than they could have ever imagined. Penelope, I think we're inside your chalk drawing, said Levi as he spun around trying to take it all in. I think you're right, answered Penelope. And is it possible that it's way cooler than I could have ever imagined? You're absolutely right, exclaimed Ivy as she walked around the big blue grass, which sprouted from under a beautiful green sky. It was just like Penelope had described it earlier that day. Everything in Penopolis was opposite, upside down, and turned all around. It was nothing like anything they'd ever seen before. A new adventure, creature, and place around every turn. Not knowing how long they would be in Penopolis, Levi, Ivy, and Penelope set out to explore. They didn't want to miss a single thing. They walked down a trail into a forest where trees seemed to grow upside down with their roots in the air rather than in the dirt. And the dirt, for that matter, didn't look like any dirt they had ever seen. Instead of being dull and, well, dirty looking, it was fluffy and pink. It looked just like cotton candy, exclaimed Levi. We're walking on cotton candy. You're right, Levi, answered Penelope. I love cotton candy and decided it should be everywhere in my magical land of Penopolis. But if you think that's cool, take a look at the river. Levi and Ivy didn't waste a minute and ran right over to the nearby water. When they got there, they saw something amazing. Are the fish swimming above the water? Asked Ivy. Total opposite overload. I love it. As they continued to look around, they watched as birds burrowed into their nest underground and bunnies made their homes in the trees overhead. Squirrels tweeted and chirped as the little insects made the biggest growls. What's going on here? Began Levi. I love it! As they continued looking around, it began to rain. But in Panopolis, as you can imagine, it was unlike anything they'd ever seen. Water began to spray up from the ground all around their feet. Or at least they thought it was water. Is that fruit punch? Giggled Ivy trying to catch a few drops in her tongue. I love Panopolis. As a lizard fluttered by on butterfly wings, the purple sun set in the green sky above felt remarkably cold. Of course the sun would be cold. It's Panopolis after all, laughed Levi to Ivy. Good thing it looks like a snowstorm is rolling in, giggled Penelope pointing right in front of them. All the snowstorms in Panopolis bring warm weather. Levi, Ivy, and Penelope warmed up as they danced through the bright pink snowflakes. As they danced and ran and played in this most magical land, they made their way back over to the river. And it was then that they met someone special. His name was Swimmy, and he was a fantastic looking goldfish. And since this was Panopolis, he was, of course, a brilliant silver color. Swimmy, it's you, exclaimed Penelope running through the clouds that filled the riverbed. I can't believe I get to meet you for real. 
I can't believe it either. Called back swimming as he floated through the air to his friend. Um, I also can't believe it, began Levi, because I don't know who Swimmy is or how he knows Penelope so well. After saying hello to her silver flying fishy friend, Penelope turned to Levi and Ivy and introduced them. This is Swimmy, said Penelope. He's the first funny creature I ever created in Panopolis. I've always wanted a goldfish, but when I drew him, I didn't have any gold chalk. So I made him silver and then started thinking about the ordinary things that I could change into something completely different from what they normally are. And bam, Panopolis was born. Levi and Ivy said hello to Swimmy and the three friends spent the rest of the afternoon exploring Panopolis with their new silver flying fish friend. As they played, they found out all kinds of fun things about Panopolis. Some things even Penelope had forgotten she created. But aside from all of that, the most important thing they discovered that day was a special gift that Swimmy had. Penelope, thank you so much for creating this amazing land, said Swimmy as he flew and fluttered around her. I have something important to share with you and your friends. Since I was kind of your inspiration for Panopolis, I was given a special gift. I can grant wishes. Penelope couldn't believe what she was hearing and being the kind of friend that she was, She told Levi and Ivy they could make a wish first. However, she said this before Swimmy was done explaining his special powers. Levi, of course, wished for a birthday cake the size of his house, and Ivy wished for superpowers. And then they waited. And waited. And waited. Um, Penelope, nothing's happening, said Levi. Maybe Swimmy really can't grant wishes. Hearing this, Swimmy was quick to finally finish explaining his special power. Levi, I can grant wishes, but only for Penelope, he said. What would you like? Penelope felt so lucky and couldn't believe the opportunity she had in front of her. However, what she said next, Levi and Ivy didn't expect at all. If I'm being honest, Swimmy, Penelope said, I already got my wish to visit Panopolis. It's all I've ever wanted and to share it with Levi and Ivy just made it that much better. I don't need a wish from you. Just meeting you and sharing this day together was a dream come true. You're really something special, Penelope, said Swimmy. I think I know another wish I could grant you, and you'll see it on your birthday. Now, I'm sorry to say this, but your time in Panopolis is almost through. However, you can come back next year before your birthday to see me again. That would be wonderful, said Penelope with a tear in her eye. But how do we get back? Just take the gold coin and flip it backwards, said Swimmy. It'll bring you back home the same way that brought you here. They all said goodbye to Swimmy and Penelope gave her silver flying fish friend one more hug before she flipped her magic coin and watched as it flipped and flipped and flipped, magically whisking them all back home. However, when they got back, the magic coin was nowhere to be found. So excited by everything else that had happened that day, the three friends didn't really think much about it. As the days passed, Levi, Ivy, and Penelope talked about their amazing adventures in Panopolis over and over again especially on Penelope's birthday. That was because before they all left, Swimmy told Levi and Ivy how they could help him surprise Penelope with the birthday wish he had promised her. So when it came time to open gifts, Penelope couldn't wait to see what Levi and Ivy had gotten her. But also if there was a gift in the pile from Swimmy. As she opened her presents, Penelope loved everyone and was so thankful to all of her friends and family for being so thoughtful and generous. However, Penelope couldn't help but notice that there was only one gift left. And it was from Levi and Ivy. I guess Swimmy didn't get around to granting that birthday wish for me, whispered Penelope to Levi and Ivy. Oh, I don't know about that, whispered Ivy back to her. Why don't you open our card? Excited by what she was hearing, Penelope took out the card, tossing the envelope on the ground. But before she could even read it, out fell the magic gold coin. Her eyes grew big and she was getting more and more excited with every passing second. Then inside the card, she saw a note from Levi, Ivy, and Swimmy. It said, We think there may be one wish you forgot about. Happy birthday, Penelope. Love, Levi, Ivy, and Swimmy. Penelope knew in an instant what they were talking about and carefully opened the box that Levi and Ivy had brought with them to the party. And there, nestled in some pink tissue paper, was the most spectacular fishbowl holding the most spectacular silver goldfish. Is that a silver goldfish? asked Penelope's mom. I've never seen anything like that. It's so unique, like it's from another world. You could say that, giggled Penelope as she looked at Levi and Ivy. Levi and Ivy giggled too. Thank you so much for him, said Penelope. 
How could I ever forget this wish? He's exactly what I've always wanted. What are you going to name him? Asked one of Penelope's other friends. I think I'll name him Swimmy, replied Penelope as she winked at Levi and Ivy. I think that's the perfect name, replied Levi and Ivy. And as she held the glass bowl up to her face to get a closer look at Swimmy, Penelope thought she saw the little fish inside mouth the words. I think it's the perfect name too. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the story and learned a little something too. And since we know everyone has their own story, we'd love to hear yours. If you have an idea for a Lively Lewis story, leave a comment on our Apple Podcast review page with five stars, your idea, and your little one's name. Then maybe our next adventure will be with you. Until our next story time hangout. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to share another fun Lively Lewis story with you.